Okay, y'all, today we're going to learn how to make our uh, little bot character move through a maze and find another actor in the maze. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Hit Alt P. Whoa! Our little bot went really fast over there to that, that new guy. Um, and then whenever we go in here and we move our bot around, we should be able to see our character zip over there to him pretty fast. Now, there's a few things we want to change on this one, but um, this comes together pretty quickly. So let me show you guys how to make this stuff. Okay, so first off, what we're going to need is we're going to need to uh, make our level a little bit bigger. I want to lay out a little bit of a maze here so we have something for our buggy bot to navigate through. And the next thing is we need a nav mesh volume. So to do that, we go up here to the top, we get the little plus icon, we're going to go down to volumes, and we're going to put in a nav mesh bounds volume. And you'll see it show up with a yellow cube like this right here. And when you drag it out and expand it, like this big one that I've got right here, uh, I just used the scale tools and I made it bigger, dropped it down into this space so it's contacting the ground. It needs to make sure you need to make sure it actually is contacting the ground, as you can see here. And then if you want to see where the nav mesh volume is affecting the space, you can hit the letter P. And it'll turn on this shaded area right here and you can see how it's building the navigational mesh around this area it'll leave place places blank wherever it can't go so like the walls there have little blank spots around them but um, our character will be able to move around so once you place that into the area that'll allow this uh, allow Unreal Engine to start building navigational paths for any AI that you build. Now that's the next thing, is that you're going to need an AI controller. Now really, for the AI controller, we're not going to have to code anything. We've just got to make one. So we're going to go down here to Content Drawer. We're going to go into our User Blueprints area, which I am on right here. I'm going to right-click in an open space, go to Blueprint Class. And if you don't already see it, this All Classes space right here, we want to hit the drop-down, and we want to type in AI. Okay. Now from here we just select AI controller and if for some reason you don't see the select button just drag this window up a little bit and hit select. You should see something like this. Now I'm going to call this AI, whoops, I want to make sure I can change the name there so I click on it again, AI bot controller and the thing that the reason we do this is we just want to have some of the features that are with the AI controller. So we have this actions component right here, which will make it actually like do stuff. And then we have path following. So it'll be able to create paths and follow them through that space. So this is really the only reason we need that controller at this point. Later on, we can add a lot more to it as we understand how to work with AI better. But for right now, this is all built for us. Okay. Next thing we need to do is go into our bot and we need to work a little bit on it. Okay, so this is my, my code right here. It's not very much, very little. I'm going to go ahead and delete that because we're going to build it together. I'm also going to delete this reference right here. Okay, let's go back up here to the top. Uh, you, you won't have those things that I've deleted. We're going to make them. But let's take a look at our components. You should have your bot. This is, uh, sorry, the default scene root for your bot, the mesh for your bot, the name that's floating over your bot. I've added this arrow in so I can always know which way that my character is facing. So if you go in here and look, my arrow shows which direction is forward for my character just so I can keep track of that. And then the next thing you want to add in is floating pawn movement. To add that in you just go up here to the add and you do floating pawn movement. And there you have it. Just click on it. It'll add it to your components list. And then once you have that highlighted go over here to the side. Now right now my max speed is 4000. I really think you ought to crank that down to like 400. Let's kind of take a look and see what that looks like once we get our code back in here. Because right now, if I hit play, well, BuggyBot doesn't go anywhere. So I need to make sure he's got some idea of where he needs to go. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to build a little bit of code in here. Okay. So there's nothing in here right now, and I want him to go after the uh, devil little actor whenever we uh, start the game. So to do that, I'm going to right click in here. I'm going to go to Event, Begin, Play. I want that to start as soon as we start the game, okay? So then the next thing I want to do is grab simple move to actor. Now you also notice we have location. These kind of look similar and uh, they're kind of similar. And if you want to play with location, you definitely can. But I'm going to use actor here. Uh, so you'll see that it needs a controller. This is the controller for Doublebot. Now, uh, I'm sorry, for uh, BuggyBot, this is the one, the bot that you're actually using. Now to add the AI controller, the one that we just made, you want to go to Class Defaults up here at the top. Then we're going to go over here to the right, and you'll notice here under Pawn, which, you know, we made our uh, bot as a pawn. 
We want to go in here and right now auto possess player. No, we're not doing anything like that. Auto possess AI. Okay, well it's placed in the world. As long as we have it in the world, it'll work. And AI controller class. Now we want to go in there. Now there is already an AI controller class. And effectively it's the same thing that we made. But since we made our own bot controller, I'm going to select AI bot controller. And uh, now that's the controller we're going to use. I want to drag off of this and we want to get controller. This will get the controller for our bot. You see it says self right here. So whatever controller we're using, it'll grab that one. And now we need to just know where it's going to go. Now to do this, we need to make a reference to the double actor that we made, or that I made actually. And to do that, we're going to go over here to the variables. We're going to hit plus, and I'm going to just type in double bot. It's not really a bot, but you know, it's it's a double. And uh, it actually, I've already made this one, but it's yours may come up as a boolean, yours may come up with something else. To make sure it comes up as the other actor that you're going to be going after, you want to go to the little drop down, and up here at the top, type in the name of the actor that you had. So I typed in double, and right now I can click on that and then go over here to object reference. That's what we want, we want an object reference. I also want to make this editable like we did with previous um, previous blueprints where we're able to edit things in the editor, like put in numbers and things like that so we can see like, oh, is this an even or an odd number and it changed our color cube. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to make this available so we can select which actor, which double actor we want it to go after. So from here we have our reference. Let's go ahead and compile so we have it. And you'll notice over here we have a default value. Everything's pretty much in here the way we need it. We're going to use this in the editor, not right here right now. But we want to drag out a reference. We want to get that reference to de uh, oh, I said to devil. Well, whatever. That's okay. It's not a big deal. It is for devil as long as you make sure you're referencing your actor you want it to go to. We're going to drag this pin into the goal. Okay, and that'll give us all the information about devil wherever they're at. Go ahead and hit compile. We have our mesh, we have our AI controller, we have the link of where our buggy bot is supposed to go to. Let's just check it out. I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt P. Let's look down. Oh, he's not moving. Why is he not moving? Okay, this is an easy fix. Don't worry. And this is probably going to happen to y'all. So let's take a look at what we're missing. Okay, so right now we have our floating pond sitting at 400. Uh, we have double bot right here. Everything seems to be in good shape. I'm going to go back into our AI controller. This is where we're, um, we don't really need this, so I'm going to go ahead and kill that off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save everything we have. Uh, let's see, untitled. This is one of our maps. Let's just call this test map. This is the thing we're building in. Um, we're going to save it. Untitled already exists. No, we're going to call this um, buggy map. Okay, I'm going to save that one. Okay, good. Had a couple other maps that we needed to have up. So we have this one right here. The reason it didn't go anywhere is because we actually didn't reference it yet. Sorry, I was just doing a little housekeeping there as we were doing that. And as you notice, every time I move something, it also uh, needs to redo the navigation. So I need to click on Buggy Bot, and right here, it didn't know where to go. And I see this happen often, so that's why the reason I wanted it to come up as an error. I just need to go in here with the uh, eyedropper. I go into my level, and you'll notice it knows that that's the right object reference that I want. That's the one, the actor I want it to go to. So now if I hit Alt-P, now we'll see BuggyBot start to navigate the maze and go over to my character. Now, this is where sometimes this simple move may get caught up a little bit. Um, we may have to move our character over a little bit or adjust the maze a little bit so we can make it move real smoothly. Just here at, at a very simple... Uh, space, but if I move him over, if I move this guy over here, and uh, let's see, I'll even put him a little bit further away. It'll actually work a little bit better. Okay, let's watch Buggy Bot navigate the maze. Goes through everything pretty well. Goes around there and meets up with Double Bot. Okay, so that's what I want you to be able to do, and I want you to create a little maze here and uh, check the agenda and the assignment for what we're using with this one to make your own version of this, and also some advanced pieces and see if you can make your, your buggy bot follow you around, okay? All right, let's get to work.